Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So my job is to come up with some of the questions and problems which can provide you some deep concepts and help you with your preparation for JE or any other entrance examination. This kind of problem you might have solved earlier, but I'm sure this problem is going to give you some challenges. It is not as simple as it seems. And there are some deep concepts here to learn. If you know them already, congratulations. But if you don't, then watch this video because you are going to learn at least four things that are going to be so useful for solving some of the problems that you see in ITJE or other examinations. Okay, so let's read out the problem first. So there is a block of mass M. This block, okay, lies on a horizontal slippery surface. So everything is frictionless. We can take it like that. And also touches a vertical wall. So this is the wall. If you see, this one is the wall. A small pellet of mass M okay, with, is released at the upper edge of the cavity of radius R. So there is a cavity, if you can see in the block of mass M, and the pellet is being released from this position. What is the maximum velocity of the block of mass M during the subsequent motion? Neglect the friction. How do you approach this problem? What are the concepts here? And how do you want to get started? Okay. So let me first give you four conceptual points which I'll be using while solving this problem. Okay. So let's deal with some concepts. And you should understand this clearly. This is extremely important. Number one is the conservation, any laws of conservation or conservation law holds only for some period of time. Okay. So not all the time things will be conserved. Okay. So this is one point to note. Second point is linear momentum is conserved. Okay. When sum of all force in some direction is zero. Okay. If this is not the case, then linear momentum will not be conserved. Okay. Now let's get into the third point when all external forces when external forces zero or constant then we can have energy as conserved okay so this one is the important point to understand these two if you see so linear momentum is conserved when the forces in a particular direction is zero it may be conserved in x direction, not in y direction and vice versa. And you can have the energy conservation even when there are external forces, but only if the external forces are zero. So example is when you have a pure rolling situation, let's say when the disc is pure rolling, friction is still there. You know, friction is there, but the work done by friction is zero because this force is static. It is applying getting applied on a point which is not moving therefore the energy remains conserved even if the friction is there but in the case of a sliding let's say some block is sliding and there is a friction then here the energy may not be conserved because the friction force is not static okay i hope you see this point okay last point which is very important is that velocity is maximum okay when what do you think when a velocity would be maximum so think this way let's take any variable let's say y when do you think y is maximum when dy with respect to whatever you are computing it let's say dz is zero and you put this and then you compute the point at which y would be minimum or maximum and this is mainly because the way to see it is that you have some curve, let's say like this, right? And in a given range. So this only applies in a given range. So let's say this is a given range. Okay. Where do you think the 
this function y is maximum so this is the point where it is maximum and this is the point where it is minimum and what is the slope of the curve this curve blue curve at these two points slope of the curve is let's say if this is y and this is z then dy by dz and this is this has to be zero both and that's why we put dy by dz as zero and then we compute the another differential like d2y by dz square and see whether this is greater than zero or less than zero what is the meaning of that whether this is going like this re you know reducing or whether this is going up and up and if it is less than zero then it must have been a maximum point and this is a minimum point on the other side so when do you think the velocity is going to be maximum or minimum so what is velocity velocity is nothing but dx by dt right so in order to maximize or minimize v we need to compute dv by dt which is nothing but d2x by dt square and we need to put this to zero and what is dv by dt or d2x by dt square it is nothing but when acceleration is zero okay so this is the important point when velocity is minimum or maximum this will apply to minimum also when acceleration is zero or the sum of all forces also has to be zero right then only you get acceleration as zero so only in this condition you can say velocity is maximum or minimum so i hope you get these four points um, thoroughly understood because we are going to use some of these in solving this problem now see why this problem is little tricky the bigger block is touching the wall so when it comes down let's say when it is coming down like this sliding down like this there is a normal force which is getting applied on this block which is in this direction and it is trying to move this big block in this direction in the negative let's say x direction if this is positive x and this is y right but the block is not going to be moved right because this is being held by a wall so from here to here if you see there is a force which is acting on the external block and which is resisting the motion okay but this force is static as you see because the block is not moving so according to this rule third rule we will have energy still conserved right energy is conserved you get it there is external force here all the friction force is not there but there is a force which is getting applied on the wall and vice versa on the block but since the force is static in nature therefore energy will be conserved okay so this is a the second thing linear momentum is conserved when for external force is zero now in y direction force is not zero because there is a normal from the ground and x direction also force is not zero because this mass is trying to push this mass in this side and there is a normal force here but until what point so that we will consider okay but at least till this point if you see let's call this point as a till this point this block bigger block of mass m will tend to go in negative x direction but the wall will apply force and will hold it here hence therefore linear momentum okay is not conserved even though everything is frictionless until point a only till point a so this is uh something that you should note because once it reaches here the pellet is here then it will try to climb up and then it will apply a force in this direction and block will try to move in this direction hence there is no wall on this side therefore the block is free to move in this side so after point a but the third point is that after point a the linear momentum is conserved
okay so you see that's this one right so these two are so important now you see we directly applied these three concept here this linear momentum and the external forces now the third thing is it is asking for what is the maximum velocity of the block so maximum velocity of the block will occur when the acceleration will be zero you get it or the sum of all forces will be zero okay so where do you think the maximum velocity will occur during this uh, subsequent the whole motion of m going from here to here so i would allow you to think for some time while we write some of the equation and then we come to this one okay this point is let's say o and this point is a and let's say this point is b so for motion of pellet m from o to a okay so let's just assume the motion for the first half okay from here till here this is point a okay this is the pellet this is pellet so we know that this height is r is energy conserved yes there is external force here but they are static forces so energy is conserved so we can write mgr equal to half m u1 square okay let's say that at this point it acquires a speed u1 okay and that will give me u1 equal to 2gr right so let's just box this equation for a moment call it 1 okay now we also know that until this point this block was not moving because there was a force here hence linear momentum is not conserved from o to a correct so we cannot write a linear momentum conservation from o to a but then at this moment just after it reaches here let's assume that for this subsequent motion once it just about to cross or crosses the point a the force of be getting applied on this side on the negative x side will be zero or there will be no force for a moment so this is the point exactly at a a is the point when momentarily or instantaneously acceleration is zero or the force is all forces are zero okay but just after that the block will start moving so let's say that block will move with velocity v and this will continue with velocity u2 u2 will be different from u1 because energy is still conserved so the whole en energy initial energy m u1 square half m u1 square will get transferred to the block also part of it but then we know that linear momentum is now conserved right linear momentum is conserved from a to let's say b this point is b so then it is simple to write the linear momentum um, equation so initial momentum is mu1 and then it becomes mu2 plus mv and therefore we can write u2 as u1 minus m by m v let's also box this equation okay now let's apply the energy equation again okay half m u1 square equal to half m u2 square plus half m v square right instantaneously when the object the pellet just crosses point a then we have this linear momentum conserved because that point force was was zero 
and the energy is also conserved at that point. Now, since half m u n square is m g r, so we can simply write m g r equal to half m u two is we can take from equation two, so it is u one minus m by m v square plus half m v square. Okay, then this will become half m. Instead of u one, we can use this expression. So which is two g r minus m by m v whole square plus half m v square. Just expand this whole thing. So half m two g r plus m by m whole square v square minus two m by m v two g r plus half m v square. Okay. So let's just take two this side and divide everything by small m. So two g r equal to two g r plus m by m whole square v square minus two m by m v two g r and plus m by m v square. So this this will cancel out, and therefore we will have zero equal to m by m v square, and then we have m by m plus one. We added this and this minus two m by m v and two g r. Therefore, we can just take m by m is common outside. Um, v m by m plus one minus two two g r. Now we know that v cannot be zero, so which means this whole expression is zero. So which means that v equal to m by M plus M two two G R, and this is the velocity of the block at point A. The moment pellet crosses point A, the bigger block gains this velocity, and this is also the maximum velocity because at this point we have the acceleration as zero or the external force. At instantaneously is zero, and we know that from concept four, that velocity is maximum when the force is zero or acceleration is zero. So this is the expression for the maximum velocity of the block during the motion. So this is the answer. Okay. So I hope you like this video. Please do subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends, and thank you very much for watching this video. Thanks. Subscribe and gain access to concepts and tips for doing better in IIT, JEE, or other examinations. Keep up the great work.